Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to discuss a couple of different topics. So we're going to go over the lymphatic system uh, as well as the innate and adaptive immunity and see kind of like how these things um, work together. Okay, so generally speaking, the function of the lymphatic system, it's filtering the blood. Okay, and so well, how do we filter this blood? So you've identified the lymphatic vessel. So one, you identified the histology, and then you also identified it there on the torso model. So the fluid that's found uh, circulating within the lymphatic system, it travels through those vessels and then it gets filtered within that lymph node, okay? So the lymphatic system, it has to get uh, drained back into the heart. And so what's circulating within the blood we don't want to have any type of pathogens or bacteria in, or anything like that. And so the lymphatic system is a way in which we can survey uh, what's found within the body. Okay. So <clears throat> you may be thinking to yourself, so what is the fluid that's actually circulating within the lymphatic system? So one thing that we've already discussed was that whenever you centrifuge blood, it separates into two components. So you have the blood plasma, which is found on the top, and then you have the formed elements. So the fluid that's circulating within the lymphatic system in those vessels is the blood plasma. So all the components that are found within the blood plasma, remember you have those antibodies that are found in there. We also uh, talked about how there are electrolytes and water in there. And there's also gonna be white blood cells that are circulating within the um, lymphatic system. And uh, one particular feature of those lymphatic vessels was those valves. So you identify those valves and what they're doing is they're preventing the backflow of the lymph. Okay. And um, one other thing to mention too is that remember that the, at the capillary beds, the fluid that's leaked out, so whenever the arterioles and the venules, they merge together at those capillary beds, the fluid that leaks out of there, that's what's being um, get into the uh, lymphatic system. Okay. So, Generally speaking, what I have drawn here, this is a general schematic of the lymph node. So remember that lymph uh, flows through the afferent, uh, afferent vessels and then leaves through the efferent. So remember, this is, the, this is where it's being filtered and then it comes out this way. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to compare innate versus adaptive. How are they, how are they different? So, you should already know, so for the innate immunity, the response is immediate. Compared to the adaptive immunity, it's more of a delayed response. It takes time for this thing to work. So when we talk about spec uh, specificity, what I mean by that is that for the adaptive immunity, it is specific to the pathogen that is present or the antigen that is present. For the innate immunity, it's nonspecific. And whenever you're exposed to this uh, particular uh, type of antigen, for the adaptive immunity, what distinguishes it from innate is the memory. So during adaptive immunity, there will be the production of memory B cells and memory T cells. Compared to, for the innate immunity, there is no memory. Okay, so now we have a general understanding of the lymphatics, the, the difference between innate and adaptive. The next thing we're going to move on to is the components. So what are the different players that are playing a role here for innate versus adaptive? Okay, so you've already learned some of the players for innate immunity. What are they? So what are the, so let me give you a hint. So what about the granulocytes? What are the particular type of granulocytes that secrete granules? Basophils. Yeah, so basophils, neutrophils, yeah, eosinophils. So remember that those neutrophils, they are phagocytes. They're the first responders. So if innate immunity cannot take care of the pathogen, if those neutrophils cannot engulf and break it down, then that's when the adaptive immunity will come into play. So components, you have the granulocytes, you also have monocytes, and another component 
um, besides granulocytes and monocytes, we also have what's known as the natural killer cells. So these natural killer cells, these are more specific for um, viral infections because they're, they're intracellular. Uh, so basically what they do is they'll just uh, find that cell that's infected and then uh, secrete these um, enzymes that will cause that cell to undergo apoptosis. Okay, so we've talked about components of the innate immunity, but now we need to discuss some of the components for um, the adaptive immunity. So we have what's known as our lymphocytes. Okay, so the lymphocytes, you have the um, B cells, and then you also have the T cells. So B cells, so B cells are, they're not effector cells, okay? So what I mean by effector is that they have not completely gone the full uh, maturation and they haven't undergone differentiation in which they become fully developed cells that can do their job to get rid of a pathogen. And so these um, B cells, what they end up becoming is what's known as plasma cells. And the plasma cells, this is what is going to secrete what we know as um, antibodies. And so the antibodies, there are specific names for them. So we call them, the term is immunoglobin. So globin is referring to a protein, immuno is referring to the immune system. And so we have different names for them. So you have immunoglobin M, so it's IgM, A, D, G, and E. So we'll discuss why it is that they are different. You know, why, is it, why are they different? But we have to get first get a kind of a, a general understanding here of it, of what they are. Okay, so the plasma cells, this is what is going to secrete these type of antibodies. So then, well, why do we need these antibodies? Like, what's the function of them? So the end goal, what we're trying to, to get, we're, so this is a general schematic of the antibody that will bind to the antigen, okay, at the top part over here. But the whole purpose of that is we want to tag it, right? Because if it has went past the innate immunity, that means that it was, it was able to not, um, not undergo the surveillance, right? The surveillance wasn't strong enough to, or it wasn't good enough to recognize it. So that's why we need the uh, adaptive immunity. But we're tagging it in order for phagocytosis to happen. And with phagocytosis, what are our phagocytes that we, that we know? So neutrophils, so the main ones are the neutrophils and then the macrophages, okay? But the binding of these antibodies to their antigen, there are a couple of different tactics that are used um, during this process. So one is what's known as agglutination so you have agglutination, and then you also have neutralization, and then you also have complement activation. So agglutination is whenever, it's what we know as clumping. So what will happen is a bunch of these antibodies will bind to that, bind to the antigen surface and kind of clump them all together for tagging and then they'll undergo phagocytosis. So then for neutralization, what is it, what the effect is, is it prevents entry. So for instance, viruses, in order for them to uh, develop their, for their progeny, for, for them to make more and more viral cells, the, the first thing they have to do is they have to bind to the, to the host cell. So they'll bind to the host cell and then undergo endocytosis where they get they go into the cell and then they use the cellular machinery in order to make more of themselves but if we can prevent them from binding to the cell surface then it can get swept away okay so that's what neutralization is we're preventing the entry um, by blocking them from going into the cell um, another thing is uh, complement activation this is just a tagging mechanism 
So I'm sure this has already kind of been introduced in lecture. You have like the C3B and it leads to what's known as the MAC complex. And that MAC complex is, there's a bunch of these uh, C proteins that will allow, um, there's an influx in which the cell under, it goes, it lyses, okay? So that's referring to, um, to complement. Okay, so that's for B cells. So the next thing we need to go uh, discuss is what's known as the T cells. So the T cells, uh, well, there's two main types. So you have the T helper cells. So I'm just gonna put TH for T helper. And then you also have the cytotoxic T cells. Okay. But actually, I'm gonna put this over here. So T helper and then cytotoxic T cells. So the inactive form of the T cells, they are what's known as, you have the CD4 T cells, and then you also have the CD8 T cells. So the CD4 cells, they will differentiate, they will become T helper cells, and there are a variety of them. So some of them include T1, T2, T17, as well as the T regulatory cell. For the cytotoxic uh, T cell, that's, it just de um, develops from the CD8 uh, T cell after differentiation. I know this seems, it seems like a lot, but we're gonna go through the steps, but we first kind of have to understand the players and how they differentiate onto the next one and what their general effect is before we kind of like understand the process itself. So for instance, the CD8 T cell, the cytotoxic, this, this cell is more responsible for um, intracellular infections. So, and when I say intracellular, what I'm referring to is for instance, like viruses and cancer. Compared to these antibodies, they're gonna bind for extracellular infections. I mean that it's not inside the cell at that point. So we're trying to um, get rid of it. Okay, so now we understand the components. We've discussed innate and adaptive. There are two other players here that are the intermediate players here. So one is, so monocytes develop into macrophages and you also have a key player which is known as the dendritic cells. Dendritic cells, they're known as antigen presenting cells. They pre they're going to uh, present their cells or present antigen um, to a, a couple of different players. And we'll, we'll talk about that, mainly to the B and the T cells. Okay, so for the different types of organs, what you need to understand is that the primary lymphoid organs, what we're referring to there, there are two main types. So one is that you have the bone marrow, and then you also have thymus is considered a primary, a primary lymphoid organ, okay? So both B and T cells, they originate within bone marrow, but where they develop, where they undergo maturation, it's different, okay? So B cells, they complete their process of maturation they complete maturation. So B cells, they undergo this process within the bone marrow and then T cells mature within the thymus. And so you may be thinking, well, what do you mean by mature? So there are two main terms here to describe this. So for maturation, one is what we know as immuno, immunocompetence. And then the other one is self-recognition. So for immunocompetence, what this means is that the cells, they can bind their specific antigen. For self-recognition, this means that they need to distinguish uh, self 
from non-self. So if you think about this, this is what this is what goes wrong with autoimmune diseases. Because the own body cells, they get recognized as foreign. And so when they're recognized as, a, as foreign, then uh, an immune response will occur and get rid of cells that we need. Okay, so we've talked about uh, primary, the primary organs and then where these different cells undergo uh, maturation. So the next thing we need to talk about is the secondary, the secondary organs. So for the secondary organs, one of them is what we know as the lymph node. And then we also have the spleen, as well as what's known as mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. And the two types of tissues here, so one of them you looked at here in lab today, so that was the palatine tonsils. And then another is what's known as the Peyer's patches. So we're going to get into um, the lymph node and like some of the details of all that. But uh, one thing to mention, so for the spleen, what you identified was the red pulp as well as the white pulp. So the difference between the two, so remember how we talked about how red blood cells, they have a, a life cycle, so they last about 120 days? Well, they get uh, filtered into the spleen, and the spleen contains a bunch of these macrophages. And so um, the breaking down of those red blood cells, that's going to occur within the red pulp. If there is um, another type of immune response, that's what will occur within the white pulp. So there's, a, there's lymphocytes there, and then there's also uh, macrophages there. Okay, uh, so another thing for, um, for the tonsils, the tonsils contain those follicles. That's something that you should have identified. And this is the location of where uh, germinal centers are. And we're gonna discuss what I mean by what, what is a germinal center. Um, Pyrus patches, we did not we did not look at this in histology, but the location of where Peyer's patches are found. So this is found within the small intestine. Okay. So uh, that's going to do it for this lecture. In the next lecture, uh, we're going to go over a couple different things. So first off, the lymph nodes, some of the details of some of the things that I've been mentioning, as well as go over the antibody structure.